Hallelujah. that song together. How majestic is your name, O Lord, in all the earth. Your name is strong and mighty. Your name is glorious and great. In him we are
call your name this morning, God. We call upon your name this morning, God. There is no other name like your name, God. Every knee must bow, every tongue must confess. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, we call that name. Hallelujah, we call upon your name. Brother Abbott will come at this time as we continue to bless his name to pray for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That name above all names. Hallelujah. 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 Let us lift up the name of the Lord. Father, we give you praise. Lord, worthy to give thanks unto you. Father and God, this morning and that time we come in your presence this morning, Lord, to offer praise and thanks unto your name, Lord. Without you, Lord, we could not have been here this morning, oh God. We thank you for life. We thank you for health. We thank you for strength. We thank you for bringing us safely this morning, oh God, so we can lift up your name, Lord, because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that you are Lord. Father, we are glad this morning that we are not numbered with the dead. Father, we are still on the land of living where praise can be offered and supplication can be made, Lord. And for that we say thank you, Lord. We give you thanks. We praise you. We lift up your name, Lord. For you alone is worthy, God. We thank you, Lord. I bring all those who are sick this morning, Lord. Whoever listening to the service this morning, Lord. That they may find refuge in you, Lord. That they may find rest unto their soul, O oh God. For you say, come, let us reason together, said the Lord. For though our sins be one way, Lord, you shall make it that helps us, do, Lord. We be as crimson as be as wool, O God. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise this morning, Lord. Father, bring the crusade before you this morning, which was taking place this evening. I pray, God, let it be a success, Lord. Let prisoners come and return to you, Lord, Father, this morning, O oh God. Touch every heart who listen this morning, God. When that sermon is preached, Lord, they may come unto you, Lord. They may not harden their heart or stiffen their necks, oh God. But we want to say hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for grace. Thank for your grace and for your mercy. Lord, by grace and your mercy brought us through, Lord. We are living this moment, Lord, only because of you, Lord. Lord, we should not have been here today. But, Lord, we know when we wasn't thinking about you, dear Father, you are thinking about us, oh God. For you send your only begotten Son into this world to die for sin which is not his own. Sin which we have committed, oh God. For that we say thank you, Lord. For that we give you praise. We give you honor. Bless everyone this morning who are here. Bless those on their way. His near speed that they may come here, Lord. And we come together to worship, Lord. For to how good and pleasant it is. Love and unity. In between us as brothers and sisters of oh God. Let us look out for each other, Lord. Let us pray for each other this morning, Lord. For you say it's good for we to dwell as one. Father, in the name of your son Jesus. For I lift up your name and we give you honor. I give you praise. And you say thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Give him a big clap offering. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised as we call on our secretary to do the announcements. You may have your seat. Good morning, church. Please listen. Open air crusade. Dub, you are never too far for God to reach you. This crusade be begins this evening at 6.30 p.m at the Belair Hard Court. During the week, the meetings will commence at 7 p.m. On Friday, 21st, there will be a youth festival with games, dances, songs, and food. The speaker will be Reverend Dr. George Frederick. A special invitation is extended to all to come out and bring others to hear the good news. Please note that the funeral service for the late Brother Donald Smith will be held right here at Glad Tidings this Saturday from 2 p.m. The body will arrive here at 1 p.m. Please note that our annual business meeting will be held next Sunday, February 23rd, 2020 at 5 p.m. right here at church. 
All members, you are asked to be out. Please note that the Gospel Fest Committee will be hosting a dance workshop next Saturday, February 22nd, 2020, at the Helping Hands Center at New Pont Rose from 3 to 7 p.m. Three persons per dance group are invited to attend. This workshop is free of cost. Also, the committee will host a practical guide to being an MC workshop on Saturday, February 29, 2020 at Faith Temple. This workshop is also free, but manuals will be made available for participants at a cost of $10. Interested persons, you are asked to take note. These are all the announcements that will be posted on the notice board. Thank you, Sister Abbott. Good morning, everyone. My name is Luan Boyd. I am your chairperson for today. I want to just greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus. You all look very lovely down there this morning. I want each of you to give one another a smile. Just smile. God is good. He's awesome. Welcome everyone who's here this morning and those who are returning and also those who are here for the very first time. I want you please to stand. But also, I am recognizing Jonathan Richards of Mackey's Hill. Could you please stand so we can recognize you this morning? As well as Nazina McLean. Joshua Denny of Camden Park, Shalisa Charles, also of Camden Park, good having you here, and I hope I call this name correct, Evrina Daniel of Park Hill, we want to welcome you, and we pray today that you will be blessed, and we're glad to have you. Okay, our returning friends, we also are glad to have you today and we pray Lord that you will be blessed today. I want to also recognize persons who are celebrating birthdays from today on to Saturday. Could you please stand so that we could recognize you? Yes, can you tell us when your birthday, the date this week, starting from Sister Michelle? Monday, Dean. Okay, what sister is that? Oh, yes, it's true. Sorry. <laughs> Joanna, Wednesday, today, happy birthday. Today and today. Okay, we wish you all happy birthday. Who am I missing? The person is hiding behind there. Okay, God blessings and I wish all of you happy birthday when that day comes. Continue to celebrate and enjoy life. We also want to recognize those persons who are celebrating a wedding anniversary from today to Saturday. Anybody here celebrating a wedding anniversary? No? No? Okay, and as we always say, let us continue to celebrate life because God is indeed good. We have babies to be dedicated this morning, so we want to invite the parents and the witnesses to come, please. When he cometh, when he cometh to make up his jewels, all his jewels.
Amen. God is so good. Isn't God good? Amen. God is fantastic. Oh, fantastic God. And uh, again, we are giving God thanks for another dedication. And we rejoice. We rejoice over children. Um, in this sense, that children are future. They are the leaders of tomorrow. Given a couple of years from now, this generation of babies will be the leaders of our country, of our region, of our villages, of our homes. So, parents, think of that. Think of that, that in your hands, in your hands, addict leader, assign this child to you to prepare a leader tomorrow. That's a big job. That's a big job. So every parent this morning need, will need to take responsibility for whatever happens in the world. A child is a product of a home. Every guy slinging a gun out there was born, you know. All what is happening and in our country now, you know, there's this heightened alertness about violence and abuse. In your hands, parents, you're holding in your hands and you have the power to prepare whatever. You have the power to prepare the next Prime Minister, the next pastor, but also the next criminal. Because just like how every child has the potential to be good, every child has the potential also to be evil. And parents' responsibility is just to do that. And here, you know something that you will do? One of the best things you could do is to do so by an example. An example. So we want you to make some promises and some vows here this morning before this altar. Do you? in the presence of this, these weaknesses, solemnly undertake to bring up your child in the fear and admonition of the Lord? If so, we do, I do. Do you promise to lead your child early to accept Christ as his, her, Lord and Savior? Do you promise to set before your child a godly and consistent example let us pray. You give me the name when I ask for it. What's up to you? Mm -hmm. So, Father, we we come to you this morning in the name of Jesus. We give you thanks. We thank you for this life. And we ask you now, Father, for your blessings upon this child. Let your hands be upon this child now, Father. In the name of Jesus, thank you for your grace and for your help upon her life. We ask, Father, as she grows, that your hands will be mightily upon this life. Thank you, Father. 
O oh God. We ask, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that God, this child, will come to faith early in her life. We claim this in the name of Jesus. Diana, we anoint you with the oil, the symbol of the Holy Spirit, and we dedicate you now unto God in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. your reward. We thank you for this precious gift, Lord. We receive it in the name of Jesus, and we pray your blessing over his life. God, may he grow up to fear you, to trust you. We thank you, Lord, that he is a child of promise. We thank you, Father, that, Lord, as he grow, we pray that he would grow in favor with God and man, that he would be strong, that he would be healthy. We thank you for the potential this child has to be, Lord, the best and to be walking in your will. Lord, may your grace cover him this, this morning in Jesus' name. Good name. Rian. Rian. Faraje. We anoint you with oil as a symbol of the Holy Spirit under whose guidance and protection you will be sealed. And we dedicate you unto God in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank you, Father, for your grace and for your help. We praise you, O oh God. Great are your works, O oh Father. We thank you for fashioning this child, God, in the depths of the For you saw him. You knew him. You are declare over his life for the purpose for which this child was created. Let it be done in the earth now in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for your touch. We pray for your manifest healing over this body now. Illness over his life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You are mighty. Your hands are not short. And we thank you for doing it today in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Jamal, we anoint you with oil as a symbol of the Holy Spirit under whose guidance and protection you will be sealed. And we dedicate you now unto God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good. Yes, ma'am. Collect your certificate at the end. God bless you all. Hallelujah. And our welcome. Well, I did not see them stand, but um, just to recognize the brother and family of Sister Jack and Patricia Mays, Patrick Gardner, and also Maggie Gardner, we want to recognize you this morning and welcome back to glad tidings and also and we pray that you will be blessed today we also recognize those persons who are viewing us by live stream 
we are glad to have you. We love and appreciate you. So we call back the worship team this morning. Thank you, Sister Boyd. Join me in standing again as we continue to worship the Lord. And whatever your situation today, know that you have someone who is greater than your situation and someone who is able to see you through despite your circumstances. This is the God we serve. This is the God we praise. Hallelujah. What can he not do? Creator of the universe, what can't you do?
every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ, you are Lord, every knee will bow down, every knee will bow down, every tongue will confess, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. In the same spirit, we'll give to the Lord that which we have brought for him this morning. Hallelujah. 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 As we ask Sister Thelma to bless that which will be brought before the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you this morning. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us with jobs, Lord, so that we may go out and earn an income. And Lord, this morning, as we bring to you our tithes and offering, we pray dear God that you will bless it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. As we pour into your storeroom, O oh God, we pray that you will continue to bless us, Lord, that your blessing will continue to be poured out among us and upon us, God. For those who do not have jobs, we pray that you will provide, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. And because we have a champion, we can declare that things are getting better. Every day they are getting better. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Things are getting 
Hallelujah. 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 Jehovah, you have the final say. Hallelujah. So we can rest. Rest in peace. Hallelujah. Because you are still in control. Hallelujah. Of every situation. Hallelujah. And circumstance. So we can rest assured in your love for us because you have the final say hallelujah 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 so we invite the person who's doing the intercessory prayer to come in this atmosphere hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. Oh, we gave you thanks this morning, God. What shall we say then to these things? God, you are in control and you have the final say. And when the devil said no, Jesus, you say yes. And we gave honor to you, mighty God. We give praise to you, the most high God. We thank you, Lord, for you are still on our way. We are still more than conquerors. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You have the final say in every situation. We give you thanks this morning. We praise and we bless your holy name. So Father, this morning as we come today, this month we celebrate Powie's month, oh God. And we come lifting every aspect of power before you today. God, you is the one who organized this organization, Lord. And we have come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in your holy name lord god you have never failed us yet and you we know you will never fail us in this organization so we bring the leaders before you today those who are in charge of running this organization we lift them up to you today father god we bring the general bishop and the members of his team and oh god for this department Lord, we want to pray especially as they will go to Miami to have conference this year. I pray you will breathe a fresh breath upon them, dear God. I pray you will give new insight unto your, your leaders, dear God. I pray for the spirit of unity, the spirit of oneness, oh God. I pray for a new vision, dear Father. I pray for... And we pray you will bless every member of Pawi, from the greatest right down to the least of us, oh God. I pray you will put a new spring in our step today, oh God. We pray, oh God, you will energize us with power from on high, oh God. Lord, that you will be able to reach this nation, this world at any cost, oh God. Father God, we see men are dying. They are dying by the hundreds. They are dying by the thousands. And oh God, many of them are dying without knowing you as their Lord and personal Savior. So I pray today, Lord, you will refresh power, oh God. We will go with a new vision and a new insight. You will open up territories for power, oh God, that you will be able to penetrate the wall, oh God, and reach men and women before it is too late. Oh God, again, we ask for your guidance, we ask for your direction. We ask for strength on your leaders, Lord. God, many of them may be getting down in age, but I pray you will build them up in your grace. I pray for fresh workers, Lord. Lord, that this organization will go from strength to strength. In the mighty name of Jesus. So I commit this organization into your hands afresh. Thank you for what you are doing and what you will continue to do. Continue to bless our general bishop, Lord, give guidance and leadership. 
thank you for the men and women that are working with him, Lord God. Father, have your way today, we pray. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You can have a seat, please, for a while, a short while. So we'll invite Sabrina Scott to come and do the reading this morning. It will be taken from Jonah 1, verse 11 to 17. Good morning, church. This morning's scripture reading will be taken from Jonah 1. I begin it. Then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee, that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea wrought and was tempestuous. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Never, nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to the land, but they could not, for the sea wrought and was tempestuous against them. Wherefore, they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord, and made vows. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. And the scripture reading. Thank you, Sister Sabrina. And I just want to welcome again those who came in after the initial welcome. We are glad to have you today. And we pray God's blessing upon you. So let's honor the man of God who's coming to bring the word for us today. Our general bishop, our pastor, Bishop Sonny E. Williams. Thank you and good morning. It's good seeing everybody here in God's house. So for those of you who are visiting and I'm, I'm not so acquainted with you, welcome. We, we're really happy to have you share with us this morning. And so let me just remind us that we will be in the open air all week, beginning this evening until, thir until Wednesday evening, we would break. And then on Friday evening, we have special youth program. And all of this will be done on the Billy Hard Court. And the Belair Hard Court is between All Saints University and uh, the Belair Government School. Many of us would have heard the sad news that Brother Donald Smith passed away last week. And we want to extend uh, our deepest condolences to his relatives on his passing. The, his funeral service will take place on Saturday, this Saturday, 2 p.m., right here at Glad Tidings Tabernacle. The, the body will be 
arrive at the church at 1 p.m. We encourage us members to please support the family um, in, this, in the time of their mourning. It is Pawi month and uh, February is celebrated in the Pentecostal Assemblies of the West Indies as Pawi month. So let me at this time Let me help us to say what, what do you know about the fellowship that you are part of? Could I test you this morning? Do you know a whole lot about Pawi? Good. I need this work. Good. So first of all, what does the acronym P? A W I stand for. You gotta stand, you gotta put up your hand. Or we have the first one down there, yes? Good, give him a hand. He is correct. Why is this not working? Move that um, thing there for me, please. Move the offering thing. Good. All right. Some. Who is the, well, up there? <laughs> you want to put up your hands? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Same. Same. And that happens to be me. <laughs> kind of handsome, though. <laughs> what, why is this not? Good. How many districts make up Powie? Well, we had a hand up here first. Yes? Is he correct? said 13. There are 13 districts that comprise the Pentecostal Assemblies of the West Indies throughout the Caribbean and Brazil. I am kind of messing up, you know. Uh, I give you the I give you the thing down there, okay? You project. I will give you the cue because it's not. Okay, go back one quick thing to get it here. All right, there are five districts in Trinidad and Tobago. Could you name them for me, please? Yes. Five of them. That's one. So we have one. Anybody else? Thank you, Ariel. Yes. Northwest Trinidad. Yes, AJ. 
That's three. We have two more. Yes. Central District and Topeco. Go to the other question. So which district do you belong to? Which district do you or we belong to? Yes, Jeremy? Who? No. Very good, St. Vincent and the Grenadines District. Who is the presiding bishop of the district of St. Vincent and the Grenadines? Um, yes, Moses. <laughs> Used to be, yes. Deacon is Jack. Correct. Who's the chairman of the board of directors of West? Yes? No? Hello? Okay, could we give the answer now? There's a picture. Reverend Dr. Pearl Rivers. That's the lady. Next question. Good. This is not a question. But the, this is our vision, and could we all recite the vision of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the West Indies to be... Amen. And uh, next we have our mission. Okay, let's go again. Tawi exists. Amen. Let's move on. And these are our core values. And it's important that we um, know the importance of our core values because all behavior, all behavior stem from some sort of inner value. And our core values are integrity, accountability, loyalty, godliness, faith, fear in God, and respect. Amen. So let's say, let's say something else about our core values. Every Pawi church, every member, must strive to reflect these values. The issue of integrity, that is so important. It needs to be accountable to somebody. And ultimately, we are all accountable to God. And then loyalty, in an age where people are loyal to nothing and to nobody. Loyalty is still a value. And godliness, in this corrupt sinful world value. That value of God. Faith of we don't have the money, but we are people of faith. We speak not problems, we speak solutions. Amen. 
because we serve a big God who is able to do all things. And the fear of God, which is dying these days. It's a simple thing for a man just to smile with you and kill you. Fact is, we are going away from the fear of God. And then respect our Whatever we do must be characterized by respect. We are respectable people. We respect one another. And we ought to see that flowing through whatever we do. So, we move on. And here now are the other members of the general executive. You have met, you've met the first one in the person of the general bishop. And then there is an assistant. General Bishop, wait, not so quick, in the person of Raymond Dr. Raymond Boca, now General Administrator, Christian, our Executive Director of Church Ministries, Reverend Cynthia Jack. So you see, we are integrated. We are, it's not just set up male. We have female also. Our executive director of World Missions, the Reverend Ricardo Joseph. Sorry, all the pictures are not available. We'll correct this next time. Our sincere apology. So, what you have just had there is the executive officers of PAWI that forms a part of the general executive and the rest of the general executive, uh, the bishops of the different districts. And here we have them, the four districts of Trinidad and Tobago with 114 churches, 21,012 members. That's four in mainland Trinidad and Tobago and you've and the bishops of the different districts northeast Trinidad the Reverend Boca Northwest Trinidad the Bishop Henry Central Trinidad Bishop Brathwaite South Trinidad um, Bishop Roberts. And in Tobago, with 21 churches, 3,605 members, and Bishop Martin Atwell. Go again. One more. One more. You missed one. All right, we go to Grenada, and uh, the bishop, we had him here last week, last year, uh, Bishop Dave King, and in Grenada, there are 25 churches, 4,522 members. In Montserrat, there are two churches. They have just planted a church this year, and our administrator, um, Reverend Nolan Warner, is the presiding bishop there, and the membership is 200 and 207. In Antigua, the bishop Nigel Henry, 17 churches, 4,090 members. In Barbados, the bishop Dr. Gerald Seals, 26 churches, and 11,115 members. In Dominica, Bishop St. Louis and 27 churches with 1,899 members. In St. Lucia, Bishop Dr. Thomas Iresti and he was the speaker at the last um, district convocation, 
22 churches, 6,921 members. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, of which we are part of, 16 churches, 3,038 members, and Bishop Stephen Oliver as the presiding bishop. Um, the executive is, general executive is also made up of not just pastors, but there are some members who we consider to be the technocrats that will guide us in important decisions. And uh, Mrs. Samantha Lawson to, from Tobago, a lawyer by profession, um, Mr. Andy Dongs from Barbados, a businessman, a banker, and the Reverend Luthan Patterson. He's the Reverend, but he is an uh, insurance executive. And so I have the privilege of working with all of these great people and uh, for power. part of the general executive. Please pray for Pawi. Um, in the month of May would be our general conference and for the first time we are taking general conference outside of the region and it would be held in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. It's the body that makes the big decisions of Pawi elect leaders, et cetera, et cetera. Um, us here at Glad Tidings would be represented at this conference by myself, my wife, and our head deacon for this one. Amen. These are critical times, and we need all the prayers for this organization at this time. Let us pray. Father, we, we love your name. We worship you. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to the name of the resurrected God who is alive. We bless you, Father. We give you praise and, and thanks and, and all of our worship. We give you our substance. We give to you, Lord, the best that we, we can give for you deserve the best. And we ask you, Father, now in the name of Jesus Christ, that your, your hands will guide as I share your word. Thank you for the ability to communicate clearly and convincingly. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. We are going back to the book of Jonah. Chapter 1 and verse 11 to 17. And we've been moving slowly through this book because this book has a lot to say to the 21st century Christian. And so today we want to talk about substitutionary sacrifice. So Jonah is on the run from God. One month ago, it was third Sunday, and we shared here about God flung a storm at, at Jonah. 
And we say that, that there is mercy and grace in your storm. Because your storm is trying, God is trying to, to bring you back to the path that he has ordained for you. And so, the storm is raging and the sailors are about to perish. And they woke Jonah, who was asleep. And the lot fell on Jonah. And we're at the point now that Jonah said, throw me into the sea. Throw me into the sea. So what is Jonah saying to us? Throw me into the sea. What is he saying? Because he said uh, that There is a divine origin in the storm. This is no ordinary storm. God prepared it for this ship, for Jonah. And God hands and so Jonah said, throw me into the sea. So there are two questions that we must ask. Is he repenting and simply saying, I deserve death for my sin against God. Kill me. Or is his motive the very opposite? Is he saying, I would rather die than obey God. And go to Nineveh. Kill me. So the question is. Is he submitting to God? Or. Rebelling against God? The answer really. Is somewhere in the middle. Because don't think that Jonah is suicidal. And he's. He just wants to kill himself. And get out of the misery. If Jonah wanted to do that, he would have killed himself a long time. The answer is in the fact that examine the text and nothing there is said about God. Jonah is not saying a thing about God there. He believes. He believes. He believe that the storm is on his account. And Jonah starts taking re responsibility for his situation. Not because he's looking at God, but because he's looking at the sailors. Jonah refused God's mission largely because he did not want to extend mercy to the pagans. Yet, Jonah, for the first time, is viewing these men as terrified. Note that these men are calling on their God. They are calling on their God while he hadn't spoke a word to his. 
they have questioned him respectfully, asking him what they should do rather than killing him. They had done nothing wrong at all. Jonah was moved by pity for these men. And this is far better than his contemptuous behavior that he was portraying. And you better believe this is the first step in coming to one's self spiritually. It is when we start thinking of somebody, anybody, other than ourselves. Prior to this, Jonah was only thinking about himself. All. Now at least, Jonah is thinking of his soldiers. Somebody else. And he's saying something like this. You are dying for me. But I should be dying for you. Throw me overboard. I'm responsible. Wow. Jonah is coming around. For the first time, this prophet, this selfish, bigoted prophet, this nationalist, this loyalist to his own people and nobody else is now thinking about somebody else. God is good. Storm working. Storm working. But we got to admire the soldiers, the sailors, where you get soldiers from, who continue to demonstrate such admirable behavior because despite Jonah's request to be thrown overboard, what they are doing. To avoid throwing him in. So they row and they lighten the ship to no avail. Nothing would work if God throw a storm. Nothing you do. Nothing anybody does. No amount of prayer will change things because God has some intent. But there is something in Jonah's action that I want us to to see. There is something about his action that I want us to see. It is about the substitutionary pattern of love. Because in by Jonah's action, Jonah is saying, I will take the wrath of the of the waves so that you won't have to i will go over into the water yes i will go over into the water So that you will be saved. A 
And there are something, my brothers and sisters, that we want you to learn today. About love. For Jonah. Jonah. Choose rather to go into the waves. Instead of exposing all the soldiers to the waves. I will do that. And learn this about true love. In that true love meets the need. Of the loved one. No matter. The cost to oneself. Could I repeat that? Because Jonah. Is modeling. Substitutionary love. I. Will take the waves. For you. You don't deserve it. I cause it. And so let me go into the wave. Throw me out so that you could be saved. That's love. True love meets the needs of the loved one. No matter the cost to oneself. It's like mothers. A mother. We celebrate, mothers, we celebrate every one of you this morning. I will talk about fathers soon too also, to, to bring the balance. But when you think of the decision, well, for some of you, it might not have been a decision. But I speak for those who made a decision. To bring a child into this world. You think it is. Easy thing that you give up. To bring one of us here. Many of you. Went. To the very doors of death. In order. To bring us here. So, we take it for granted. And then when you think of all the, all you had to give up, that little one there, when that little one there was born, that little one there just gets stuck to you. And all it did was to demand. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? It hungry, it ball. It wet, it ball. It happy, it ball too. It sad, it ball. It was just a demand. It just everything was a demand for you. And you notice, babes, that if the moment that you didn't breastfeed them, and you deprive them a little of breastfeed, when they get the breast, the first thing they do is to punish you. And them little fellas, the, the little fellas and girls, they grow all doing what? Demanding your attention, your love. Because if you didn't give them that, you know they, they grew up to a whole, load of, a whole load of people who are terrorizing the country. Lack love and attention. That was about love. Was love. That what you gave at a high price. Whenever we keep a promise or a vow to someone. Despite the cost. We love according to the pattern of substitutionary sacrifice.
We gave something. We, it was a substitute. That is what love is all about. Jonah is demonstrating that kind of love. I cause it this and the soldiers were very discerning. This storm is because your God is angry at you. And there will be nothing. So Jonah said before all we die here I will go in the waves. The thing about this love is, love is all about loss. If you love and you're not willing to suffer loss, and so anybody who, who get crazy over, over, over your ship, Go crazy over whatever you have to offer. And all that they are after is, is your currency. Your boobs, your butt, your whatever. They will not be willing to stand the price of it, which is loss. Love involves loss. Big loss. Whether, whether of money, of time, or energy. Loss. So when you take on yourself a woman, Guys, know the price is lost. The demand for your time. The demand for your attention. That you have to give up some of your rights. The problem is that in lots of relationships, lots of people want the best of both worlds. They love their single life. But they want the benefits of a married one. You have not learned what love is. Because love is loss. It's pain. It's a price. We must decrease that they may increase in such love. The thing about it in such love we are not diminished but we become stronger wiser happier deeper all those who have loved and have suffered loss you really realize you have just become stronger wiser happier and deeper. This is how God loves us. This is how God demonstrated his love through Christ came to love sinners while we were yet sinners. Christ loved us. Jonah is a brilliant example at this point of substitutionary sacrifice. Throw me overboard. I am the cause. I will hit the water so that you will be saved. And you know Jesus in the New Testament, Jesus picks up this thought in Matthew 12 and 41 when he says a greater than Jonah is the men of Nineveh will stand up on the day of judgment with this generation and condemn it for they repented 
at the preaching of Jonah. And now something greater than Jonah is here. Jesus Christ. It means, my brothers and sisters, that as Jonah sacrificed himself to save the soldiers, sailors, so Jesus will sacrifice himself to save the world. There are some differences. The differences between Jesus and Jonah are many, very many, and they are very profound. Jonah was cast out into the sea because of his own sins. But that's not true of Jesus. Hebrews 4 and 15 tells us, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses. But we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. Yet, he did in no way the perfect one. Jonah was responsible. He was a culprit. Not Jesus. He bore our sins. The sinless for the sinners. You see, Jonah came near to death and went under the water. While Jesus actually died and he came under the weight. You could imagine the weight of every person in the world. Sin. Somebody. The song. My sins were higher than the mountain. Mountain. You could imagine. All the. All the. All the men and women have seen Vincent and the Caribbean and the world. When Jesus went into the grave and the awesome weight of all the sins were upon him. Jonah took the role of the scapegoat. And you will know the scapegoat in the Old Testament. Where this innocent goat, the priest, will confess all the sins of the people over the goat's head. That was a scapegoat. And the scapegoat who did nothing wrong. Thief, nobody, nothing. Gossip, nobody. You understand? It took all their sins and the scapegoat was driven in the wilderness never to be seen again. Sacrifice that Jonah made saved the soldiers. But see, Jesus said, a greater, a greater than Jonah is here. Greater than Jonah. Because the Son of Man declared in Mark 10 and 45, he summarized his mission when he said, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served. And to give his life a ransom for many. Ransom. A ransom for a ransom. Meaning, he was our substitute. A substitute. I, he didn't sin. I sinned. You sinned. And he substituted all of that on the cross. And note that the moment Jonah hit the water, what the Bible said, the sea ceased from its raging. Wow. Wow. 
the storm switched off as a light being turned out. One storm gone. The anger of the storm was a real expression of the anger of God towards his rebellious prophet, which was turned aside when Jonah was cast into the waves. But there is a word in the, in the New Testament that describes Jonah's sacrifice and is the word propitiation. It is, it is these doctrines that these days we are not too keen about. Because we don't like to spend the time to dig deep into God's word. By and large, we love light stuff. And, uh, but deep in the word, we are hearing Paul in Romans 3 and 25 talks about this. Whom God has set forth to be the propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. So let's get it back there, my brothers and sisters. Jonah was thrown into the waves and immediately the storm ceased. Because the storm was an expression of the rage of God. And perhaps in, in our time, we are not comfortable with a God who goes into a rage. We talk about the love of God. And that is so true. But also, God hates sin. Let me repeat that. God hates sin. And God has a rage against sin. The Apostle Paul said that Jesus is our propitiation for our sins. Meaning, God hates sin. God sees sin as obnoxious. And the Bible says that God is angry with sinners every day. Could I, could I repeat that? Because in our time, our time that every, everything must be kissy kissy, lovey lovey, Choppy, choppy, friendly, nice, and don't use words like rage and anger and punishment and all of that. So, so perhaps we are toning down that part of God. But if even we fail to preach that there is that sight of God, that is about rage. Look at it, rage. God sent a prophet with a message of love to an ungodly people. But this prophet, because he's a nationalist, and because that prophet says, you see me now going, because if I go, God going to change his mind. God loving, I ain't going. God, like the sea, went into a rage and flung 
a storm. And the ship. You see, believers, we've got to believe it. We've got to be, we've got to ask God to give us the spirit of discernment. Give me the spirit of discernment. Because, listen to me, there are some times when God goes in a rage against wrong. I don't know. I don't know. But, but we've got to get that. Because when God always go hold prayer meeting with them. You could always go pray and pray and pray and do all of that and then feel guilty. Because God is in a rage against wrong. And the only thing is going to satisfy God is when man bow at the cross of Jesus Christ. When man recognize that God is an awesome God and he is willing to and listen remember you know all of us all of us deserve that good let me get out of this Remember, all of us had deserved it. But Jesus, like Jonah, Jesus said, Father, before you kill them, because them deserve it, every one of them, because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Before you do that, let me take the rap. Jesus became the propitiation of all. He satisfied the wrath of God. And any man who refused Jesus will perish. It's a part of the gospel that we must proclaim any man, any religious man who believe he could tie his head, wrap his head, give five candles in the hand and they turn him north and south and, but he's still big in the fornication. Listen to me. The wrath of God the wrath of God is coming for you because there is only one way to satisfy the wrath of God is in Jesus. So more and more people are coming have some dream I want to baptize. I could baptize you from January to the same. Bow before Jesus and say, God, I am a sinner. Save me. The wrath of God is coming. Let me put back them thing in the Bible. Jesus is the pro pity Asian. God is a God of love as well as a God of mercy. And sin often put God in a rage.
So when the sailors saw this miracle, the prophet hit the water. The storm calmed instantaneously. These guys start making vows to God. It says, verse 16, at this, at this, the instantaneous calming of the storm, God switches anger. The men greatly feared the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. And, and let me draw you deeper into the, into the Hebrew interpretation here. Because the sailors used the word Yahweh. The Hebrew personal name that denotes a personal relationship with him. And, and that's what you will find in the Hebrew. The different names do have different they speak of different say Yahweh. You see, the fear of, of the Lord is essential to all saving knowledge and wisdom. But that's what Psalm 111, verse 10 a says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Please note, you've got to note this, that these men made their vows after the danger passed. Please note that. They made their vows. They call the Lord Yahweh reflecting a personal relationship after the danger passed. They were not seeking God for what God could do for them. You know, there's a big difference. There are people who would be in church this morning if their lives were in chaos. Because they're looking for, for a God who could do something for me. But these men, it was simply for who you are. It is who you are. These men said, you, you understand, they see a phenomenal work and display of God's power. And it's as it were, they say, wow, what a God. What a God. I want to serve that God. That's the God I want. That's the God I want. You see, a whole load of people Whole oh, load of people, when they're in trouble, they turn to God. And as soon as the trouble pass, listen to me, you could visit them from night until day. What kind of disciple work with them? As soon as danger is past, they need not God. God has done it for me. That's what I needed. There is no sense of your awesome power. Your awesomeness. Listen, I serve you. I didn't come here this morning with my begging bowl. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme, gimme. 
I didn't come here because of Brooks. I didn't come here because I'm naked and I have nothing else to do. I come here because God, you're an awesome God. You're majestic. You're powerful. You are God. You are God. That's the place that we must reach. That's the place we must reach. That God, you're an awesome God. So even when my pockets are empty and I am broke and busted, you are still God. Still God. Too many of us, man. Too many of us. Only worship when things bad. And we want something from God. Dying song like some lovers. So the song says, What do you do with me when you get what you want tonight? After that. For the worship God for the greatness of who he is in himself. In himself. That's the beginning of faith. That's the beginning of faith. So look at the irony. Jonah flees from God. Because he didn't want to go and show God's love and truth to wicked pagans. But that exactly is what he ends, he ends up doing. These are pagans. These are pagan sailors. And even in the man's rebellion, God is revealing himself to these sailors. But we end and we shall continue next time. That when the prophet hit the water, he ain't drunk. It's a God of a second chance. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Those of you who have been given second chances, third chances, fourth chances, fifth chances, God, you're plenteous in mercy, man. Plenteous in mercy. I told you that there is mercy in the midst of storm. It's because God loves you. That's why he pursuing you and trying to bring you back with all the storms of your life. And the Bible said, God. Jonah. We will talk about that next time. But examine the pattern of substitutionary love. When we grab and embrace such truth, that truth make me a husband. Change me. That's, that's the very love of God. Change us. That's, that is about God. That's about God. Encounter this God this morning. Encounter this great, mighty God. So, Father, thank you. Bless your words. They are blessed. They are ever settled in heaven. And God, your words will not return void, but will accomplish the purpose for which they were intended. In Jesus' name. Amen.
awesomeness. Sense the awesomeness of God. Hallelujah. Mighty, mighty are your miracles. Stand in awe. Stand in awe. Stand in awe. Speechless. Before this mighty, magnificent, omnipotent God. Oh God. We ask you today, God. That God cause men and women to respond in the way these sailors responded. The world and the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. God will rise today in full devotion to you, Yahweh, Yahweh. Devotion. We pledge our allegiance to you, sovereign God. The God who ceased from his rage because of a substitutional sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Father, for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wonder here this morning if there is one person here who say, I'm not safe, but have an encounter God. I want to give him my whole life. Identify yourself by raising your hand or by standing. I need that God. I need that God. You want to pray for you? I need that God. And if you would have raised your hands and you want to come, Join me down here. In the name of Jesus. Are there are others this morning who would want to join this young chap here at this altar. The only thing that could 
avert God's rage is when we embrace the Son who is the propitiation. He is the only one who could satisfy God's rage. praying for both of you this morning as you embrace God as your personal God. The, the sea, the storm ceases raging when Jonah was thrown there. Some of your storms ain't coming to an end soon. I declare it this morning. Some of your storms ain't at the end. Because you have forsaken God's only way to avoid his storm. The storm ceased. when Jonah was thrown into the sea. I want to lead both of you in this prayer. Pray with me as you believe in your heart. Oh God, I acknowledge that you are my Savior, that you died for me, and that you are the only way to God and to my salvation. I receive you now as my personal and Lord. 
of all of my sins. And help me now to live this life by faith through your blood in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. Thank you. We pray that your hands will be upon both of them. Miracle working God. Yahweh. We speak Yahweh over your life. Miracle working Yahweh. We ask your Father for the anointing of them hands here. In the name of Jesus Christ. That God, every yoke would be broken. We take the authority now, God, as she goes to her home. We pray, Father, that you will go before and you are going to do the work of the restoration now. In the powerful name of the resurrected Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for doing it now, Father. In Jesus' name, God, lay hands on him. God, I pray, Father, every gift in this boy now, we call it forth in Jesus' name. And we pray every distraction will be reduced in its influence over your life right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for doing it now, Lord. God, we pray that your hands will be upon everyone who have come, God. That the victory, miracle work in God will be demonstrated through your life in Jesus' name. Would I ask the rest of us to stand? Brother Chandler's, whose aunt passed away a couple of weeks ago in Barbados, she will be buried tomorrow. A funeral service will be held on Monday at the Lomans Hill New Testament Church of God. Is it 2? At 2 p.m. Of that, I'm sure this will go a long way in supporting this family. Pleasant good morning to everyone. Just for our information, that on Friday night, we'll be having uh, more or less a youth um, extravaganza, drama, fun time at that crusade ground. And so there'll be food and eat. So we're just asking.